Alrighty, what's up? Oh, everybody! My peeps, you sexy bitches! How's it going? It is I, Peter Joseph here, for a Sunday afternoon video. Right here on the official Peter Joseph YouTube Wrestling Channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Joseph. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video. And hit that subscribe button down there inside of my goddamn pants. Otherwise known as the scripture marks below. And share the video all over the internet. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Show your love and support. You can leave a comment on this video or any one of my past videos, my current videos, or in the future, Conan. But don't be don't be stupid and leave stupid comments because you're going to be automatically blocked. And if you don't like that, well, too fucking bad. Cry me a river and go cry to your mama, bitch. That's all I got to say about that. You don't like my zero tolerance policy? Kiss my ass. Go on your dead channel and do your own video. That won't get any views. Or get clout views. But it is what it is. I get real views and I, re real views and I get real likes. And if you don't like it, too, too bad. Because I'm better than you and you know it. And that's that. Uh, so yeah, so leave a comment if you wish. But like I said, don't leave stupid comments because you go bye-bye. And don't forget to tap that bell and turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next video. Because if you miss any one of my videos, you need to get slapped in the face. And your SOL. And I think we all know what that means by now. And if you don't know, look it up. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so once again, like, like share, subscribe, leave, and uh, leave a comment. Hit the bell for more. And if you're new here, you're brand new. No fake accounts, none of that bullshit. Because that don't count. If you're brand new, you just happen to see my gorgeous sexy face. And if you happen to you know, look at my channel... And you, you like what you see, please hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button down below. And I'll also, also subscribe to my other channels with very good, with epic content on those as well. And leave your, leave your comments down there and all that other good shit. You know what to do. And that's uh, pretty much it. Don't forget to hit that bell for more so you don't miss a beat. And that's pretty much it. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. It is Sunday afternoon, August the 11th, 2024. I am coming off a uh, a long night of indie wrestling last night in Jersey, hanging out with friends, and, uh, you know, went to sleep really late last night, woke up a few hours ago to have some breakfast, and uh, pretty much now I take my shower. I still got to comb my hair a little bit because it's a little bit messy, but it is what it is. So, I'm going to be doing that, and I'm um, pretty much going to enjoy my Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, as I do my usual Sunday stuff, and um, yeah, I'm going to be going out for a little walk pretty soon, and doing my Sunday things, like I said, and uh, that's all I got to say about that, because I have a life and you don't, and that's all I got to say about that. Alright, but on this Sunday afternoon... Less hot and and humid, I mean humid, than yesterday. And I think it's pr pretty much going to be the last hot day we get here for a while here in the here in the northeast. Uh, going to be around the eight and the uh, you know the around the around eighty pretty much for the next few days. It's going to be raining by next weekend and into next week. There is a chance we might get might might get remnants of a hurricane that's kind of out in the Atlantic right now, and it's. Gonna be coming into the uh, Lesser Antilles, the Leeward Islands, you know, Antigua and everything. Um, by Tuesday, might be around the Puerto Rico area. So I hope my good my good friend Issa doesn't get hit hard with with a tropical storm or a hurricane, which will be named Ernesto. How fitting, um, you know. So hopefully, by, by that time, it'll probably be like a minimal hurricane. So not. That much damage, so she might lose power for a few days. I hope not, but I mean, we have to see what happens with that. And depending on the track, it might go up the east coast and maybe come around the New York area. But you know, forecast right now is saying it's going to go go north e northwest to around Puerto Rico into the Bahamas and then kind of curve northeast and pretty much not even hit the United States. 
fact. But anything can happen between now and pretty much next week. So, something to look at, but looks like we're going to get our next hurricane of the hurricane season. Number five, and that's Ernesto. But we got a, we still got a long way to go with the hurricane season. We got pretty much two weeks of August, and we got all of September, pretty much all of October, and a little bit in November. So, you think you can't get a hurricane in October? You can. Especially around these, these next of the woods, Superstorm Sandy, anyone? Pretty much... 12 years ago. It just came out of the blue, you know. Hopefully we we'll never get one of those again. Because even the houses that are that are, that were built and now they're lifted just for that reason, because the you know the bays and the and the canal and the and everything, you know, overflowed. That's your my area, but craziness. You know. You know, some some people were even my area down by the beach lost a, lost their houses. They you know, lost a lot of money to repair the houses. Lost a lot of a lot of stuff. They had to rebuild, like lift their house, like I said. But fortunately for me, I didn't even lose anything except for the refrigerator. But that was it. But you know, my house was built on sand, so. But yeah, water did start coming in. Like around 7, 8 o'clock. Lost power around 5, 6 o'clock. Didn't come back for two weeks. And then on top of that, we had we had a snowstorm after that. Ugh. That was crazy. Right? Like, maybe like a week after San Diego, we had a, had a freaking, I think it was like 6 to 8 inches of snow. Not a blizzard, thank God. But a lot of work that was done during Sandy. But, you know, clean, cleaning up... And you uh, know, I had friends and family that had that lost a lot, of, a few things. I had to help out, you know. But you know, hopefully we'll never get one of those again, or a cat three to cat four, cat God forbid, cat five. This house will be go bye bye. Pretty much, this house will be this you know, ex will explode, and be gone. And I probably be home. I don't know where I'm gonna live. I have to live with the parents, or I might have to move out of the state. And then, well, after I assess the damage and everything, you know. But hopefully nothing like that in the near future. But by that time, I'll probably be in a different state by the time, like, New York ever gets hit directly with a Cat 3, Cat 4, Cat 5. You know, but it can, it can happen at any time, so I gotta be ready, so. But it is what it is, but, you know, to people in Puerto Rico and, you know, all those... Islands like like uh, Dominica, Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, Bermuda, even Florida got hit with Debbie last week. You know, lots of rain down there, in, even in Georgia and the Carolinas, Virginia, Maryland, upstate New York, even in New England. Lots of rain, but thankfully not a lot of damage, and I don't think I heard anybody dying. You know, I think one person might have died because they're idiots and went out into the, into the flood. With their car and pretty much drowned. That's stupid. You should listen to the weatherman every once in a while. Like you think that you have four wheel drive, like I'm gonna go breeze through this, this flooding water, and the next thing you know, you can't. You're going nowhere, and the water's going up, up, and up, and then you're fucked if you don't get, if you don't get saved by the national guard. You're screwed. Unless you're a good swimmer, then you don't have to worry about that. If not, you're fucked. That's um, pretty much it. I'm not the greatest swimmer in the world, but I'd be able to survive. If I have to, but... I mean, I got nervous because I thought that, you know, God forbid, I was up, you know, I was up in my at my second floor of my house when Sandy hit. And I got nervous because I thought the house was going to go completely on the water. And I might have to swim my way out even to get the door open. Or even before that, I might have to, all the water that came up to my door and a little bit inside my house, that all that water was gonna. That would have lost more than a refrigerator. But, I mean, it is what it is. And this is before I had the wrestling cats. Way before that, but. But thankfully, you know, 12 years later, I'm here. And I'm not going anywhere. But, you know, I've lived through many hurricanes in my day. 
Hurricane Gloria, night 85, 86, I think it was. Crazy that storm that was. But I lived through a lot of a lot of storms. Hurricane Hugo back in the 90s. I was actually at school when that hit. Holy shit. I'm like, why do my why are we here? Why are we in school? And the, the beginnings of, of Hurricane Hugo were hitting. That was a pain in the ass to get home. With all that wind and rain. Really. We used to call it Hurricane Homo back in the day. Oh, I'm sorry you say that, but... That's what we used to call it back in my... Back in my day! Back when I was like 7th, 8th grade. When that storm hit. But... I lived through a lot of storms, too. A lot of severe storms, too. I remember a, uh, a tornado actually... Hit right... Uh, hit New York City at one point. I think it was like maybe a couple years ago. That was crazy. I wasn't around, thankfully. But it didn't hit my area. It hit another part of Brooklyn. But you, know, you get tornadoes here in New York. Especially around this area sometimes. Not all the time, but you know. It can get really windy. And there's some da you know, damage to the light poles. And I you know, lose satellite. Lose power for a little while. Lose the internet. It's crazy. Especially in the summer. Summers here are crazy. But some summers are not that bad. But this summer hasn't been that bad. There has been some severe weather here and there. And, you know, remnants of storms coming in. But, I mean, it is what it is. Alright. But, you know, to everybody in Florida and in the Caribbean, you know, just back down the hatches. Got pretty much almost three months to go before hurricane season goes bye-bye. So long, farewell until next April. So hopefully we won't get any hurricanes during Easter weekend, which is at the end of April. During WrestleMania weekend, WrestleMania 41. But, you know, it's in Vegas, so I doubt anything's going to happen in Vegas. Plus they're in a, do plus they're in a dome, so even if, it, even if it was like a monsoon, they'd be, they'd be pretty much fine because everybody would be inside. So, But going to the events during the day, you know, that might be a pain in their butt. I wish it was at the Sphere, but I don't think the Sphere holds that many people, though. But they could probably get like 10, 20,000 people in the, in the Sphere, at least. But they're at Allegiant Stadium where the Raiders play. But it should be a good time next April. Uh, I think it's the 19th and the 20th, which is basically Easter weekend. Which Easter's late again. I think it was late this year and it's late next year. But, you know, have fun during Easter weekend. Just don't kill the Easter money. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, anyway, we move on. But, that's all I gotta say about that. But, hopefully everybody's having a great Sunday, whatever you're doing. Be safe, be well, and enjoy the final weeks. The final actual, uh, yeah, the final, basically, five weeks of summer. Actually, six weeks of summer, I should say. But six weeks from tomorrow is, uh... Not, not, sorry, I just take that back. Six weeks from this Wednesday is the, the beginning of fall. So, we got six weeks to go officially of summer, but three weeks from tomorrow is Labor Day, the unofficial end of summer, Labor Day weekend. It's going to be fun. We got Bash in Berlin that Saturday. That Sunday, we got NXT No Mercy. And then the following weekend, we got, uh, we got all, we got all out from Chicago, Illinois. But we got some other road stops to get to before we even get to that. And the first one is AEW All Out. Two weeks from tonight, today, actually. I almost said tonight, but it's today because it's in the UK. Because it's going to start at 1 p.m. with zero hour, which is going to 2. And then the pay-per-view will be starting around 2 o'clock. It should end about 7, 8 o'clock. Knowing, knowing Tony Khan and his long pay-per-views, especially this one, which is basically their WrestleMania. It's got to go at least five hours plus the scrum. So that's like six, seven hours in, in the UK. So if you're living in the UK, you know, that show's going to start at 7 p.m. UK time. By the time it's done, it's like 12. By the time you're leaving, it's, the scrum is like 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning UK time. Crazy. And then they have to fly back probably that Monday to go to get ready for Dynamite right after that. But... You know, this week is the final actual di live Dynamite. 
because it's live this week. Next week is in London, because they're going to be in the UK. There's probably not, there's no, um, I don't know about Collision. Collision's probably going to be taped, it's taped anyway, so there'll be no point in having a, t a live edition of, co of Collision on August the 24th. Live from the freaking, uh, from Arlington. Like, how are you going to get to the UK in time? So, so yeah. So, uh, this coming week, this Saturday's edition of, of Collision will be, uh, live. And then, probably that, uh, well, probably this week they'll tape Collision, two, two episodes of Collision. So, it might be taped this week. I don't know. I don't know. They'll probably be, they have to tape the 24th, the 24th Collision anyway. And then the following week is, um, they probably, go, I don't, they might be live on the 31st, which will, will actually be good because it'll be like a lead-in from Basher Berlin all into, into Collision later that night. But the following week, September the 7th, there is no, there is no Collision, let's just get, they put on Saturday, uh, bleh, let's just put on Friday night, going head-to-head -head with SmackDown, the final SmackDown on Fox. Because, uh, SmackDown's going to the USA Network, September the 13th. And it will be headed, headlined by Roman Reigns, our tribal chief. As as always, every day we must acknowledge our tribal chief. Well, we did it last night in Jersey. Oh, boy. Lots of Roman fans. Loved it. Let me move on with that. Speak, well, we're not going to talk about Roman right now. We're going to talk about AEW. Or AEW. And right now, it is time. This is uh, probably the last time I'm actually going to do this. Maybe more. I don't know. But... I'm going to do a two-in-one video, like I usually do with my SmackDown Rampage reviews and my TNA Ring of Honor reviews, but this time I'm going to be doing your late and out-of-date, well, really late and out-of-date for this one, uh, AEW Dynamite and AEW Rampage reviews for August the 7th, 2024 and August the 9th, 2024. From the LJVM Coliseum in Winston-Salem, North Carolina! Man, that's pretty much it. Alright, as of this video, we are two weeks away, like I said, from All In. All In 3. You know, they call it All In 2. But it's the second one from Wembley. The first one was from Chicago. Way back when. You want to call it All In 2? Go ahead. I'll call it All In 3. Because that's what it is. The third annual All In, not well, not annual, because now it's annual from last year. Whatever it is, it's All In Three. Whatever you want to call it, I don't give a shit. I'll, I will title it all, title it All In Three when I do the review when um that night, that later that day, that day, that night, whatever it is. So if you're gonna say, "Oh, you're clickbaiting," you're like, "No, I'm not," because it's the third edition of All In. Because there's one in 2018 when AEW first started. And then last year was all in two. This year is all in three, and you 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 definitely will have all in four next next uh, year in 2025, whether it be in Wembley or somewhere somewhere else. But anyway, we got that. All right, we had a lot of good stuff on this show. Uh, MJF taking on Kyle Fletcher in a in a uh, American title elimination match. Uh, we had Jared Jared G E W F G A W R E W T. That's Jared Jared taking on. Brian Danielson, yes, in a no disqualification, no time limit match, and we got a lot of other things on the show, but we'll talk about that in a minute, and also, uh, Grand Page was also from the same arena, and our commentary team, pretty much for both shows, uh, well, besides, well, except for Rampage, on, on, uh, Dynamite was Man Behind the Mask, Excalibur, the biggest Met fan I know, where he's not having a great wait weekend so far, and that's Taz. And the man himself, who might have made an appearance in Jersey last night, but he looked different. He didn't look 60 some odd years old. Guy looked like a 30 year old schmuck. But anyway, it is our good friend Tony Baloney Shivani. Back up, Tony Shivani! It's Dynamite! On TBS! My God, a superstition! Okay. Calm down, JR. You know, we got, we got all that. Alright, so, like I said, Dynamite was, our, was uh, pretty decent. Not great, but... Okay, 600 
and uh, over 600,000 views. So, a little bit better than the week before that. And, um, that's it. Alright, I'm going to paraphrase most of this because I am... Uh, I'm going to be going. I'm going out a little bit, so I'm going to paraphrase most of the results. Just, uh, just for this video, uh, when I um, I'm going to do Collision uh, when I come back tonight, and hopefully try to get TNA Ring of Honor as well uh, before I hit the bed. But we'll see what happens with that. Whatever time I get home tonight, but because I'm going out and then going out to dinner and then see what time I get home and how tired I am. That's all I can say about that. Alright, so we start off Dynamite with our first match of the night in AEW American Championship Eliminator match. We have the champion Maxwell Jacob Fartknocker. That's MJF, the American champion. Taking on Kyle Fletcher, formerly of United Empire. But now part of Don Cow's family. You know, the devil himself, Don Callis, on commentary. And uh, this was a very good match match to start the show. Lots of uh, back and forth they went. Uh, Fletcher at one point dropped the Machu Minubu. Yeah! Dig it! Uh, from the top, from the heavens, as Randy Savage would tell you. For a near fall, back inside the ring. He goes for a power driver and gets counted into a Alabama slam by Mr. MJF. Uh, then MJF hits a Hamelot DDT, you're not Andrade, for a near fall. As we get a double down, MJF starts slapping himself in the face, you know, yelling a lot like, ah, wake up, asshole! Um, then he starts slapping Kyle Fletcher to wake him up, which pissed him off. Then we get a big old clothesline, Ladiato. And then Fletcher picks picks up MJF and Lawn Dart him into the middle turnbuckle. And then MJF tries to end his career like he almost did to Daniel Garcia a couple weeks ago with a super tombstone. But thankfully Kyle Fletcher escaped that. Then he hits a mean old power driver for a near fall. And then Don Cow's like, that's it, I'm going to the ring, with, and throws Kyle the screwdriver, like he did at Kenny, like he did the Ocean Spray at, um, at Dynasty, when Swerve uh, had the belt and everything, and Fletcher's like, he's about to use it, because, because, uh, MJ was like, like, uh, it was like half dead and uh, on the ropes and everything, Kyle's like, eh, no. Throws it away, throws it down. That was a bad move. And then uh, MJF hits Kyle Fletcher in the testicles. Then he hits a shotgun kangaroo kick. Kangaroo kick sounds like something out of Street Fighter. Um, kangaroo kick. I almost said a dookie, a dookie, a dookie. I always say I used to say a do kick back in the day, but it's a dookin, a dookin. Made famous by Mr. Uh, Kenny Omega. But still. So he hits the shotgun kangaroo kick. Um, in the corner. Then picks up Kyle Fletcher. And hits a Austin Aries like. Bling! Basta! One, two, three. MJF Maxwell kick of fart knocker. Is your winner in under 18 minutes. Great match to start the show. Three and a half out of five stars. Kyle Fletcher is just close. This close. Former TV champion of Ring of Honor. I think he'll get there. He'll get that TNT title eventually. Or maybe he'll get the American slash soon to be maybe in an, in an, uh, intercontinental belt. We'll have to see what happens with that. But like I said, three and a half out of five stars. And then after the match, uh, Mac, uh, Max continues to beat down. Uh, gets the dynamite diamond ring. Boom. Bloodies up. Kyle Fletcher on, like, the top of his head, like, right around here. And then, like, we're, like, saying, where the hell is Ocean Spray? And Ocean Spray uh, tried to get out of his, his locker room, but it was uh, partially uh, blocked by equipment. And then, eventually, Ocean Spray got out of there, ran to the ring, and saved 
his good buddy from getting hit with Tiger Driver 91. I thought it was 93, but 91. Uh, Ojibwe gets down there in time, clears the ring, and uh, Ojibwe's Spray, nice white shirt turned all red because Kyle Fletcher was bleeding like a stuffed pig. That was a good visual, but, you know, it is what it is. And um, that's pretty much pretty much it. So this feud with MJF and Ocean Spray continues on all the way to Wembley in two weeks from, from today for the American title and Ocean Spray's home turf, basically. I hate to see him lose, but there's a good chance that he might lose in his hometown. Well, yeah, it's hometown of England, and you, if he loses, you know, there's going to be a full-scale riot in Wembley Stadium. So, I don't think he's got, I don't, there's, there's probably a 50% chance he loses. But it's a 50% chance he wins, so it's 50-50. But I'm going to go with the, with the odds and go with Ocean Spray. He's going to, going to regain the Intercontinental title and rename it the Intercontinental title through that garbage American belt. Belt in 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 freaking the freaking river, don't the ca canal or something in uh in in London, but we'll see what happens with with all that. All right, after that we get a video of of uh, typing up Brian Danielson and Joe Garrett with Vicky the Dragon Steamboat, like the great Howard Finkel would say. Saying, uh, basically saying that um, he wants to see it. But Steamboat was like, I'm going to be there. I, I, I can't wait to see it. And it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Wait, you, you didn't see it before there, Ricky. What are you talking about? Don't waste me on the dragon. Okay, calm down. Don't fire out my freaking mouth. Pfft. I will burn you. They're going to get you, Barbara! <laughs> anyway, moving on. Alright, so after that, we go back to the ring with match number two. On Dynamite, we go to the lovely ladies of AEW. And we have two hot fucking bitches. My girl, Mariah May. Mm, uh, the Owen Hart Cup winner. And her feud with Tony Storm continues on. Holy crap. It's going to be bloody as shit, probably, because this, this, they're going to tell an amazing story in Mario May's hometown of England. Mario May's going to get the belt, probably have a long run with it, who knows, but we got that. So, she takes on the Vietnamese hottie, Viva Van, who hasn't won a match in AEW since she actually appeared in AEW on, well, for Ring of Honor. Hasn't won on Rampage, hasn't pretty much won on Dynamite or Collision. People calling her a jobber. Oh, you haven't seen her indie work. She's a better indie star, you know, than pretty much been on on the AEW roster right now. But she takes people to, not the limit per se, some matches she has, but not so much this one. Six and a half minute match almost. And, uh, you know, just like Viva Van faced Tony, Tony Storm, uh, Mariah did basically the, basically the same freaking moves, you know. You know, rubbing her ass in front of Viva Van's face, you know, you know, banging her head into her hot ass. Damn, I wish I was Viva Van right now, but it is, I mean, getting that hot ass in your face. Let me move on with that. Uh, and basically, you know, uh, Viva did a few moves here and there, nothing great. Uh, eventually... She, uh, Mariah kisses Viva Van's cheek. Oh, I wish that was me. Uh, should have been me. Anyway, uh, then she hits Mayday, uh, but doesn't go for the cover. Instead, as she's been doing lately, she mocks Tony Storm, hits Storm Zero, one, two, three, pretty much six and a half minutes. Mariah May gets the win. What are you going to do? Match gave 2.5 out of 5 stars. After the match, some guy at ringside gives Mario May a uh, a present, and it looks and you can tell it's like a picture because it's like a big picture frame just with the with the uh, the wrapper around it. So Tony's like, "For me, 
you shouldn't have. So she opens it, and we see it's from Tony Storm. She unwraps it. It's a big picture of her and Tony. I think before she was going to win the... It was on the apron. Remember that, that whole scene where she's hugging her bosom? Right before Tony Storm won, won the Owen Cup. And then she looks at it. And then we see on the back it says, Die Mariah, die! Kind of like almost a throwback to Die Rocky, die back in the, late, the uh, mid-90s before The Rock! Became The Rock. So we had that. And then. You know, we see that. And then Tony Storm comes in. With a cowboy hat. She's dressed in black once again. And then they have a humongous brawl. With like two security guards. Two referees. I mean I don't get it. How do you have two referees. Two security guards in this brawl. And then later on. There's like 16 security guards later on in the night. I'm like, what? Where were they? Did they miss their cue or something like that? They're in, they're in catering eating donuts? The fuck? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like looking at both segments. I'm like, come on! What are we missing here? I mean, Tony Khan, are you, are you trying to be like Shawn Michaels with the security guards and, and appoint the Triple H a little bit? With, with like, you have three, four security guards because you can't hire like 15? You can't get anybody else from the indie circuit to j just come come and be your security guard? I mean, you can't call Joey Ace my boy, you know? Not like that, but... By the way, he was wrestling last night. He loved my Macho Man shirt, by the way. Oh, I got a lot of love for that Macho Man shirt. I did my Macho Man impression too. I'm like, thank you very much, Macho Man loves you. Dig it! What do you think about that, Miss Elizabeth? I think that's great, Randy. That's right, you don't, you don't back talk me, Miss Elizabeth. Duh. I drop a rainbow down from heaven. What are you talking about, Randy? You okay? Shut up! Stop showing some Jim! Oh, yeah! Be a man, Hogan! Okay. Randy, calm down, please. Anyway. Alright, so we got all that. Big brawl. Right at the end. These, these two women are going to beat the fuck out of each other in two weeks. And that's it. Alright, after that, we get... I thought it was a commercial. We get this weird fucking video of Jack Perry. Remember him? Jungle Jack Perry, scapegoat Jack Perry, the guy that got destroyed in, at inside that... Inside of... Blood and guts. Almost got a freaking concussion thanks to Mark Briscoe's wicked chair shot. Woo! Almost got lit on fire. But still your TNT champion. So we see Jack Perry watching clips of that whole thing. And it talks about willing about being willing to sacrifice anything. And then it kind of coincides with a Taco Bell commercial. What? I'm like, we're like talking about Taco Grandes and boxes and shit of the new of the new stuff at Taco Bell. How's that going side with freaking Jack Perry, but basically almost dying two weeks about a, two weeks ago? All right, good product placement though, but okay. So I thought that was weird. Two and a half out of five stars. All right, then we get to well, this guy, the guy is facing him at all at all in for the TNT title. Hi guys! Hi guys! It's me, Darby Allen. You know, I saw that commercial with Jack Perry and I thought it was freaking hilarious. You know, Jack Perry, I hope you show up in Wembley because I'm gonna fucking kick your ass. Because I weigh 150 pounds, I'm from Seattle. Basically. That's why, you know, Darby didn't light him on fire and pre pretty much commit, I mean, fucking murder. Not even, well, murder slash arson. Ugh. Who would have been done? They would have put him in the fucking loony bin. Not even the loony bin. They would have put him in put him in jail and freaking, ex, freaking, um, exterminated him. Executed him. Jack Perry would have, you know, like, get by fire. I mean, we would have had a legit human torch. 
Remember that stupid match that, that was in WCW with Vampiro and Sting? That was horrible. And you thought the Viagra on a pole match was bad. That was bad. But Sting almost missed the fucking crash pad after getting lit on fire. The whole match sucked. It was a waste of time. You wanted to do that, you should have done it in, in um diff a different promotion, not WCW. But their few just like just went to that 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 limit, you know. I was thinking like um, uh, what's his name um, when uh, in the um, was it no in um, not in Lucha Underground. I'm saying um, W X uh, Wrestling Society X. Remember it was um, oh what's his name Ricky? I can't think of his name. I, I had I know you I, you you know who it is, but that feud where basically the guy that fought Abyss. Back in WC, not in WC, TNA. I can't, I can't think of his name off the top of my goddamn head. But, yeah, he blew a fireball into Vampiro's face. And I had to blur it on MTV because it was too violent. Not like everything else they didn't, they didn't even blur. With all the, all the people going through uh, C4 explosives. And all that shit that Wrestling Society X was. Even though I had a, and, you know, they had a, Broadcast at like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning on MTV because they're too pussy to put it on at 8 o'clock. Same thing when they did when, when Headbangers Ball was big, huge. Like on 11, between 11 and 1. And then when they took it off, they brought it back with Jose Mangan and, and other people. It was on like at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. On a flight. I don't even remember what night it was. I think it was on Friday night, Saturday night maybe, maybe during a week. I'm like, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm listening to fucking heavy metal videos. Look at that, In This Moment. Yes, they did show In This Moment I, on Headbangers Ball, thanks to this Jose Mangan back in the day. I mean, but still, 3 o'clock in the morning? I mean, like, I mean, like, seriously. I'm watching an Exodus video at three o'clock in the morning. I can't even, I can't even turn it up, you know, unless I was home alone. Can't do it now. There is no Headmaker's Ball. I, I have to, I have to, like, if I want to listen to some great heavy metal, put it on Spotify or put it on Pandora or even on Sirius XM Radio, Liquid Metal or, or Octane. I just, I just. Blow up, blow up my speak my my speakers and make the make the the neighbors go crazy at three a.m. in the morning if I wanted to, but I don't. Unless it's like New Year's Eve, I'm home. <laughs> now after the ball drops, you know, and all that shit, I just just fire up Spotify, play some fucking in this moment or some Slayer, fucking Slayer. You know, some bombastic heavy metal. That's way better than that country crap. Oh, Johnny Cash sold more records than in this moment. Big deal. I mean, nothing, nothing wrong with Johnny Cash. I love Johnny Cash. I will into a burning ring of fire. Down, down, down. A flame's getting higher. Down, down, down. The ring of fire. He did a good version of her by, by, uh, by, uh, Nine Inch Nails. That version is pretty decent, you know. I don't want to say anything bad about that cover, cover, cover by Johnny Cash. We know another band that does a lot of in this, a lot of uh, Nine Inch Nails covers. In this moment, did it closer, which was epic. By the way, two million hits. You know, it was a live video, and I was in that, and I got credit for that. But even even the, the studio version is way better than the live version. Just saying, don't hurt, don't don't don't. You know, all the, all the In This Moment fans are going to get my ass now, but I don't give a shit. But still a great time during the Black Widow release party. Mm-mm-mm. Probably the greatest night of my fucking life next to my wedding. But I digress. I digress on that. But, yeah, they have, on the, on the, their current tour, they're, they're doing um, a, a Nine Inch Nails song. I think it's called Something I Never Had. I never heard the song, but I, ha I have heard the In This Moment version. Kicks ass. Right now, in this moment, on the, uh, 
on, on tour again with Ice Nine Kills on their second part of the tour. I forgot the name of it. Not the Hell Pop 2 tour. I forgot the, I think it's uh, Into Hell Tour 2. I forget what the name of it is. It is. But they're playing a festival and and uh, arena venue near you. So go see them and tell them Peter, Peter Joseph sent you. Trust me, they do. They'll be on tour until I think uh, the end of September. And then I don't know if they're doing anything for the winter. But it's been pretty much over a year that uh, that Godmother's been out. So they're probably going to be going on tour next year. Do all 2025. I don't know if they're going to do another record. Usually in the in this moment cycles, like two, two and a half years before a new record comes out. So who knows what's going to happen between now and 2026. I hope a new record, you know, be in this uh, ITM 9, I believe. The ninth record. Not counting the greatest hits record. And not counting the deluxe editions of, of, of some of those records. Like, like uh, the Cream Ultraviolet Edition. Blood. The uh, the deluxe edition of Blood. The deluxe edition of Soul Coast Wasteland. I don't even know. I think there's a, a deluxe edition of... Uh, of a Black Widow, which I have to get. I have to look that up. Um, there's a lot of extra stuff. You know? And also, in this moment, did uh, Radiohead's Creep, which sounds amazing. And you wouldn't think that in this moment does cover songs that they do, and they kick ass, except for a couple of them. Fly like, I don't really like their version of Fly Like an Eagle. I mean, it's not that bad, per se, but We Will Rock You? No! That should have never been done. I know it's with Lizzie Hale, the hottie that she is, and Taylor Momsen from Pretty Reckless. <laughs> I mean, I've been okay with... with I'm, I, don't, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Pretty Reckless and Taylor Momsen. Monson. I mean, I'm a big fan of Lizzie Hale. I am a major fan of Lizzie Hale, and I've seen her live, and I met her, too. I'm a very important Peter, VIP. But it is what it is. But I would have been okay if it was a duet. Oh, they got Ash Costello, my sweetheart, Ash Costello, that, mind you, for that track, but... No, 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 no. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a great cover. I don't really particularly like it, and I don't know why they put a second cover on, on the album Mother. I don't know why. It should, I wouldn't find with, uh, with that cover, with uh, Fly Like an Eagle, and I'm mean, okay with it. I mean, Ritual has... Uh, in the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. A lot of people don't like it, but I like it, so fuck you. And I'm not stuff pretty much it. And God Mode has Army of Me by Bjork. Woo! And it, it, the advanced version of that song, holy shit. It basically almost sounds the same, but a little bit more electronic. That's what In This Moment now is now. They're like an electronic slash metal band, deathcore, whatever you want to call it. Pretty much now it's like industrial electronica what in this you can't really you know give them a genre because when they started they were metalcore they weren't deathcore but they were metalcore rem, you know they had heavy metal influences and and everything so that's what, that's what it was. That's like that's what in this moment was back in the day before they changed their sound and everything. That many people do still do not like, including the misses. Can't please everybody. I, I mean, I mean, you know, pretty much after after Blood when Black Widow came out, I'm like, okay, this sounds okay. It wasn't a bad album. Lots of bangers. On that, on, on, the, on that. And then when Ritual came out, which was album number six. Yeah, because it's eight now. Uh, album number six, which was Ritual, was a stripped down, was stripped down, not many heavy guitar riffs by Chris and Randy White's on the beast that he is. You know, that, that, and that was Tom Haynes' final album. I don't, um, with, no, Blood was, I'm sorry. Uh, Kent Gimmel, The Man on the Skins. Pretty much been the drummer for in this moment for Ritual, God Mode, and and Mother, and probably will be on the, the next album, unless otherwise told. But I mean, it is what it is. 
I mean, I'm okay with blood with uh, Black Widow, but Ritual, not that bad. I'd probably give that a six out of ten on the on the on the scale. Uh, but when Mulder came out, that bumped up my rating. Cause I I give that an eight, not on my highest list, not on my top three list really. But Mother is great. God Mode is pretty much a step above that. Great, but not, not pretty much in my top ten, but not not even close to the top three. Cause my top three is O S always is Beautiful Tragedy, Blood, and Soul Cross Wasteland. Everything else, pretty much, my, I, the album I hate the most is The Dream. It knows a couple of great songs I love. I just think it's not, there's only one fucking heavy song on it. It's The Great Divide, that's it. Everything else is poppy, poppy metal. I'm like, what is this? I mean, it's still a great album, but not my favorite. If you get the deluxe edition, you get Call Me which is a great cover, probably one of the best covers next to Run to the Hills, which was never released as a single. It should have been. And I'm Broken, which was on on um, Talking Metal, which used to be on on my music site Fuse, which Fuse is not even a Fuse is not even a music channel anymore, like VH1 and MTV. You want to you want to get some heavy fucking metal, then you have to go to MTV Classic. If you have Optimum, it's not, I don't even have it on here. On the Rich Man's Dish, I have to buy it, which I did, but, you know. I had to pay an extra ten bucks, but it is what it is. I don't even need it, really. I can just fire up Spotify and I get everything. You know, I can just fire up YouTube and just type in heavy metal bands that, and I see videos I've never seen before. That's what sometimes what, you know... When, you, when they have rock block, like play old school rock videos from band, like Journey. I'm like, Journey? Okay. I've seen videos that i never seen before. I'm like, wait a minute, I haven't seen this before. It's like, they, they do some deep cuts, and I'm like, wait a minute, MTV does deep cut videos now? Where is this when I was watching MTV back in the 80s and the early 90s? Shit. Even VH1 used to do that. There is no VH1 now, because now VH1 and MTV are pretty much. Converge into MTV Classic. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? But yeah. But you know, a lot of concerts come. A lot of concerts this year. Great concerts. Conquer Divide. You know, on tour now on a headlining tour, mind you. They have a couple, they're not coming to New York. It sucks. Um. But, um, Seven Dust is coming to town next month. I don't know, I doubt, probably not going to that one. Um, I think Fozzie's coming in October to New York City. You want to go see him? Go see him. Tell him I sent you. Um, David Gilmore, his solo tour to, to promote Luck and Strange, who comes out in a couple weeks, which I already bought on Spotify. I already, it's already downloaded. I've listened to the entire album. It's pretty damn good. So get it now. I got it for free. <laughs> but we move on. Uh, and other than that, you know, the, he's doing five shows at the Garden, all sold out. There's no way I'm going to be able to get, get any tickets unless I sit in, in the tippy-tippy top. Like, I'm touching the ceiling of the Garden. Now, and God forbid I get a good price on SeatGeek. So you don't buy it on Ticketmaster, because those prices are way too much. Buy it, for, buy it from, like, SeatGeek... Or any other site you can get concert tickets from. Except, uh, like, like, beside, don't get it from Ticketmaster. Don't, um, Annihilation, you might get a, you might get a deal, you know. You're not going to pay a lot for your muffler and everything. But, I would just go to, like, SeatGeek. Or, uh, you know, any, any, uh, last minute ticket site that you can get a good deal with. And that people are selling tickets for a good price. I did, I did that once for a New Japan show at the Hammerstein. I got my tickets for, for 30 bucks because somebody was selling it. I bought it for 30 bucks, downloaded, downloaded the same day to my phone, and then the show was a couple of days later, and I go, I showed my thing, like, I'm watching New Japan Pro Wrestling live at the Hammerstein, even though I was sitting in 
in the second balcony. I didn't give a shit because I saw everything. And I met Shibata at that show. And yes, the picture is on my Facebook page. But I digress on that. Like my other pictures of every, every, pretty much every place I go. So you think I don't show proof of, of, of having a life? I do, but I don't need to show it to you fuckers on YouTube. Because I'll take my pictures and then, you know, I can take everything illegally. And that's a crime, by the way. But, I mean, it is what it is. You want to, you want to, um, make... Make fun, make fun, and put 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 my picture next to Sloth on the Goonies, and say we're related. Jerk! No, no, just jealous because I look way better than you, and I have a hotter girlfriend than you. At least she's real, unlike your rubber doll and your fake Cabbage Patch kid. But I digress on that. But it is what it is. You know, if you want to make fun of my looks, I don't give a shit. I don't care. You want to make fun of my videos? Don't care. Because you're still watching. I never watch your videos. That's a lie. That is a definite lie. I don't watch. I download. It's the same fucking thing. You're still watching my video even if you download it. Moron. And it equals a view. Because you download. You had to click on my video to download it. Dumbass. See, I'm much smarter than you, and better looking, and and pretty much everything else. But I don't have to do what you tell me to do, like that great song. I won't do what you told me! Fuck you! I won't do what you told me! Gotta love Rage Against Machine. Great band. Pretty much extinct now. Like Aerosmith. And KISS! But KISS is still around doing... Gene Simmons is doing a tour in Europe now. Paul Stanley's doing some stuff. I don't even know what Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer are doing. I could care less. Ace Freely's doing his own fucking shit with his his, uh, his band. Peter, uh, Peter Chris, I have no idea what he's doing. I could have met Peter Chris way back in the day. Cause I I met his cousin actually. Cause he came to he came to a show, a uh, uh, a show that I was I was I went to. For a couple of my friends who were in a band, they were playing, and Peter Chris's cousin was there. I'm like, where's your, where, where's Peter Chris, where is he? Oh, he's not here. I'm like, damn. Damn, I could have met a legend in Peter Chris. Shit. What are you going to do? Coulda, shoulda, woulda. But I met Ozzy, so. Oh, do, do I have to, sh I guess I have to show it again. Yes. One, two, oh, and three. That's not Mr. VIP. Hey, that all rhymed. Got him good. Uh, anyway, so be jealous because you'll never be, have the life I have. So, kiss my rosy red ass, Mahoney. Rosy? Alright, let's get back to Dynamite. Let's get back to uh, this video because I gotta finish it off because I am going, getting out of here. Alright, so we had Darby. Hi, guys. I just wanted to say hello because I come from Seattle. So he's there, wants Jack Perry to show up at Wembley and take his belt, which he probably will. Maybe, maybe not. It's gonna be a war, that, that match. It should have a stipulation, but right now it does not. I think in the next two weeks we'll probably get something. Can't just do a straight up one on one match with those guys. Come on now. It, it, unless the ref and his own discretion lets it go barbaric. Look, we had that. Alright, so we got that. Alright, after that, we go to the bounty hunter, Brian Keith, part of the Jericho Vortex, with, the, with Mr. Reading Rainbow himself. Hi, guys! Hi, guys! Bye, guys! Okay, Chris Jericho on commentary. So he takes on the returning Katsuyori Shibata! And this uh, came from last week's um, collision, I think. But anyway, kind of back and forth match, seven minute match. Uh, Shibata makes, uh, makes uh, 
Brian Key tapped to the cross arm breaker. Already know Brian Key's coming off a bad shoulder, uh, bad arm injury. Because, I mean, Joe Shibata and Hook fucked him up for a couple weeks. Broke his arm, broke his elbow and everything. So Brian Keat was making clear and he wants to get wanted to get his revenge on Shibata. But that didn't happen. And we got that seven minute match. I gave two and a half out of five stars. And then after the match, big Cass. He's seven foot tall. And you can't teach that. Speaking of Enzo Amore. He had a match in GCW. He got fucked up by Schlock. Woo! He legit got fucked up. My name is Enzo Amore, and I'm a bona fide stud and a certified G, and I got my ass kicked in GCW, and you can't teach that. Now you know how Mike Cardona feels. Well, even though he cheated to get the GCW heavyweight title from Nick fucking Gage. MDK all day, motherfucker! Nick Gage is a beast. I met him. I saw some of his matches in GCW. <sighs> Pack a lunch if you go to GCW show, because some of the shit they do will make you hurl. Oi, oi, oi. Not that I did, but... Because I've seen it before, and I know, I know what hardcore wrestling is. I've been watching it for many, many, many years. But they are sick bastards, some of them. Schlock is one of them. He'll take a bite out of a fucking light tube and then stab you with it. Like, you sick fuck? Shit. Nick Gage is on that too. I mean, they are crazy in GCW. The only, the only, well, besides ICW, pretty much is the only American hardcore federations around, pretty much in the Northeast. I don't know about Midwest, down South, or whatever. I mean, you know, where, wherever in this great, great land of America. But those two promotions, GCW is just like global right now. Just insane what they do with the, the shit that comes out. And they have women beating the fuck out of each other. Rita Yamashita was the American hardcore champion at one point. Long time. Alice Cologne was also a champion. I think, uh, I think Ryu Yamashita beat him to get the belt. And then I forgot who she lost to. The Gage was champion. Moxley, we all know that. That feud, that blood feud with fucking Gage. Nick fucking Gage, just to say. Matt Cardona became champion, which we, none of us liked. The indie god that he thinks he is, when he's not. He's still Mr. Woo Woo Woo, you blew it. He's still in GCW, though. Which is why. Because you got nothing else to do because WWE doesn't want to sign your fucking ass anymore. And pretty much, you're only in AEW for a cup of coffee because co you're, you're, you're good friends with Cody! He was there for like one match. Bye. Cup of coffee, get out of here. Then he goes to GCW, wins the fucking title from Nick fucking Gage. Holds it for a, a while, and they were like, and he was like the most hated man in the indies. He still is. I mean, he's got a hot wife in Chelsea Green! Who, who can get hardcore too, not in the bedroom, but still. Holy shit. And boy does he hate my, my, my good friend Mittens. And he can get hardcore too, that guy is like 25, 26 years old. Living his dream. Going, going to... Pretty much working in GCW and ICW with his, with his so-called dad, Danny Demento. He's living in life, man. He's going to UK. He's going to Chattanooga, Tennessee. He's, he is Mr. International Mittens. So, he's a, he's a cool kid. I haven't seen him in a long time, but we still frequently talk here, here and there on Twitter, but... It is what it is. Moving on. But, yeah. But we get, we uh, pretty much get that. Uh, so, Jer uh, Big Cass and Jericho come in for a 3 one beatdown. But then, then uh, we we see the returning sense for the man. You! Get in here, Hulk! Here he is, 
this, ladies and gentlemen. He is back. Hook. And uh, who has a hot as fuck girlfriend, by the way. I saw that video, Hook. You bastard. He's basically freaking dancing and he's freaking hooks like this on the, on the freaking bed playing with his freaking switch or whatever he's doing. And I'm like, dude! I'm like, I'd steal like, your girlfriend from you. Fuck you, Hook. No, I'm just kidding. Now, now Taz is gonna give me, gonna freaking hack, send, send Hook to kick my ass. Whatever. Good old brother! You know, but at least we're Met fans, so you can't do that to me, so. It is what it is. Moving on. So Hook comes out. Gets revenge, and, um, well, pretty much two-thirds of that group with Samoa Joe is back. We just don't know when Joe is coming back, if at all. But, well, Jericho's still the FTW champion, probably going to be losing that belt pretty soon. And I think pretty much the Jericho Vortex will probably be extinct pretty soon. You know, he still has to deal with a guy named Minoru Suzuki. Kasadi Nani! But that's probably going to be in Japan. G1's about to end pretty soon. I heard, I think New Yuji the God is in the finals, I heard. Yuji the God of all people. The legend that he is. God, I mean, imagine he wins that. He goes on to, go on to Wrestle Kingdom 19 to face whoever the champion is. Would it be... Um, would it be Naito! Or pretty much anybody else on my fucking roster. Like, usually the guy, a 50 some odd year old dude, went into G1. Who knew? I was hoping Suji would win it, but. Or Zack Sabre Jr., but I don't think they have enough points. But, I mean. Hey, if Yuji the wins it, I mean, congrats to him. But if Suji wins it, I would be in. in heaven with that. Naito versus Suji. Woo, that should be good. But, I mean, we'll have to see what happens. But the G1 is pretty much almost over. And as it's, it's always, has had some great matches, some surprises. I mean, having uh, uh, Takeshita had a good G1. Obviously not winning it. Um, Takeshita had a good G1. And he teamed, teamed up with... Members of the United Empire, meaning Fletcher and I think Jeff Cobb. Was um I don't know what happened to Mark Davis. I know he's still I don't know if he's still injured or he's just in Japan. He's just hanging out in Japan. But I would love to have United Empire fully reform in AEW. Like we we had kind of that that for a little bit. But I mean with the great Okan, whatever happened to him? I think he's stuck in Japan still, but. But I'd like to see a full-fledged, uh, you know, uh, full-fledged reunion of the United Empire in AEW. Bring over Jeff Cobb. Bring over the Great Old Khan. Because you have a new, I mean, Tony Khan and Tanahashi have a great friendship. For, forbidden to anyone. Uh, <laughs> you know, new, the New Japan AEW partnership is, I, I think, pretty much still intact. Now, Tony Khan's talking to CMLL. That's what we had at Forbidden Door 3. You can only imagine what's next if we've been into a four next year. God forbid, you know, you know, a certain guy named Paul Levesque talks to Tony Khan. Let's open it wide open. Bring over some WWE guys. Like Seth freaking Rollins. No, like Moxley will be facing like Seth freaking Rollins or some shit. That would be epic. But not, not like Roman's going to come through that door. I mean, who would Roman fight in AEW, really? Maybe you can fight Ishii and beat... Not Ishii, it's Ishii. Maybe, you know, that would be a good match. Two stone pit bulls beating the fuck out of each other. Roman would win, obviously. And even though Ishii would no sound pretty much everything. And I heard RVD hated, hates that. Like, people who no sell moves, basically. Like, Ishii does a lot. Shibata does the same fucking shit. What are you going to do? Don't get into an argument with Rob Van Dam. You suck. Pretty much it. Alright, so we got that. So that 
feud continues on, and we'll see what happens with that. Probably get something on Zero Hour, or maybe on the main show. We'll see what happens with that. Alright, after that, uh, we go to the conglomeration, uh, who basically are not there because there was a lot, lots of, uh, travel issues due to Hurricane, uh, Tropical Storm slash Hurricane Debbie, uh, during that entire, uh, weekend and earlier this, uh, earlier this coming, this week. So, the lone member of the conglomeration, but she squeezed Orange Juice, Orange Cassidy, he's there, I think with Renee, he's like, I'm the only one here because everybody else had travel issues, but I'm still gonna wrestle anyway. And I'm gonna, he's gonna be teaming up with FTR, fuck the revival of Dax the Axe, Hardwood, Hardwood, and Cash, I got a clock wheeler, and I can actually use it. You know, him and Arn Anderson should hang out more often, you know, because both have Glocks. And you can, can legally use it now. It is what it is. If Arn Anderson was like, you know, you know, in the, you know, back in the day, if Cash Wheeler was around like 20, some, 20, 30 years ago, that would be a weird fuck match. Clock on a pole match. First one to get the clock can use it. But knowing them, they will have like fake piss, fake, uh, you know, uh, you know, fake bullets, basically. They wouldn't be live bullets, it'd be fake. Like, he's got the clock, he's going, oh my god! He shot him in the head! And then you see, like, it's like, like one of them will gonna fall down, and he's like, everybody thinks he's dead, the commentators think he's dead, the fans think he's dead. And then for for added added visual effect, you know they show the blood they show like a blood packet or like blood like they get hit with the they get hit in the head with the fake with the uh, the fake bullet they they, they they fall down they fall down and then they have to somehow somehow not show them like bleeding or everything or maybe they're like and then they turn around boom shot in the head and you see all the blood coming out of the head and a, and a little a little mark. Of the, of the fake bullet. I don't think it would ever happen, but... Hey, if they had Viagra on a pole, you know Vince Russo would have thought of that idea, probably. Bro! Hey, if you could put Judy Bagwell on a, on a fucking forklift... I mean, Vince Russo would probably think of something like that, too. Viagra on a pole. Ugh. Judy Bagwell on the pole. That was probably the best thing about the whole Vince Russo era of WCW, except from when he made David Arquette champ. Ugh! That was pretty much the death nail of WCW, in my eyes. Not the Time Warner... Well, partly that was, too, the death of WCW was the Time Warner AOL deal. But pretty much after 98, the NWO stunk. Hogan was like, not really in it. It was just trying to be president Hulk Hogan, which didn't really go anywhere. And then pretty much he left. I think a bash at the beach, whatever year that was. It was 90... What year was that? It was in 2000, right? Like 98, 99, I think it was. But... Yep. WCW. Good old WCW. Tony Bologna... Tony Baloney still hates himself for announcing that Mick Foley was Mick Foley was winning the WWE title from The Rock on a tape tape Raw, which was pretty much the start of the Attitude Era and the, and the start of WWE beating the fuck out of Nitro. Pretty much every fucking week after Nitro was whipping WWE's ass for fifty two weeks, for basically a whole year, almost a year and a half. But Tony Schiavone never opened his goddamn mouth. I don't even think we're having Attitude Era. Or, or a Monday Night War. But, you know. It's like OJ. It happens. You know. We got that. Alright, back to wrestling we go. We're still in wrestling. Back to Dynamite. Alright. So, Orange Cassidy says he's going to fight anyway. Like I said, he's going to team up with FTR to take on Bruce, the Beast, Mortos, and Fatty. We'll get to that in a little bit. But before we get there, we have a... We have Hangman Adam Page, D. 
do some cowboy shit. Uh, does an interview, I think, with Renee, and he says, I only want to destroy Swerve, but people keep getting in my goddamn way, and he vows to get his revenge on Swerve. So you know what that means. Swerve versus Hangman 5, probably at All Out, or at, at uh, Wrestle Dream. But how do you end that feud? You can't really end it. Really should it really ended at match number three when they had that vicious match, that lights out match at full gear. I think it was uh, I think a year or so ago. And then they had that stupid match to that number one contenders match with Joe involved in it, or to get to Joe, or whatever it was. No, become the champ. I think it's become the champ or whatever it was. That was dumb because they went to a time limit draw. Then they had that uh, that triple threat match where Swerve won the belt. I think it was at Res uh, at Wrestle. Uh, what was that? At Dynasty last year? I forget. Or this year, whatever it was. But yeah, that was really number four. And then I gotta do a fifth match. I mean, what else can you do besides that you haven't done yet? Cage. I think that's probably the last thing, the, the final thing they can do is cage. It's a cage, they're both going to be busted wide open and everything. It's going to be crazy as fuck. Page will probably dive off the top of the cage. Almost kill himself. Might be some real glass. Barbed wire. Who knows, maybe it'll break out some C4 explosives. I mean, you and, and it wouldn't even top that hardcore match at full gear. I don't think anything can top that match. Right, in that type of match, the hardcore match. Even with Dona Rosa and, and Gianna Perrazzo in that bull rope match on Collision last night. It was good, it was bloody, but not to that, to swerve Hangman and a Page level. That was like, sick, that was a sick match. Probably one of the most violent matches in AEW next to, next to Blood and Guts. But, I mean, we have that. Alright, so we have, we have Hangman wanting his revenge on Swerve. So we get that. And then, speaking of Swerve, he sits down with good old JR. Back God, Bobby and Sauce. And, um, on Collision, we had a, a sit down with Danielson. Well, we'll get to that later t tonight. Blah, blah, blah. So, Swerve wants to see the world title match, uh, no, Jim Ross wants to see the world title match at All In with Swerve defending against Danielson, so maybe he'll be there, maybe he won't. Uh, Swerve doesn't feel remorse over some of the worst things he's done in his career, and he won't feel bad about beating Danielson up. He's like, this is my company, I don't care about Danielson, I don't care about Bree and his two kids. Shit, damn. And, um, Swerve's like, not only what I uh, not only will I beat him, I will beat him. That sounds redundant. Okay, but anyway, we got that. I think Danielson might win the title and drop it right, right all in, or maybe at Wrestle Dream, because uh, I did read a report on Ringside News that he's getting another neck surgery at the end of the year. I told you, stop doing those fucking dives to the outside. And what happens? A couple years later, he has to get another neck, sur ne another neck surgery. So he's definitely done wrestling. Whether it be done as a full-time wrestler, I mean, he's done for good. He loses, the, he loses the swerve, he's done for good. Or he wins, but then eventually probably be added time and maybe loses the belt at the next pay-per-view or Wrestle Dream. Who knows what's going to happen, but I think if he does win the belt... At all in, at all out. He's probably going to eat the next dynamite. He's probably going to drop it. Or just say, you know what? I had a great career. I'm going to be a part-time wrestler. And he'll only show up every, like, so often. He'd be like Roman almost, but... Not as much. Not, I mean, not like Roman. Because he actually, actually might defend the belt. But... I don't know what, what's going to happen. I want... I, I think Swerve's going to... I want Danielson to win the belt just to finish his career... At least as a world champion in AEW. But, I mean, if not, he had a great career. From Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor career was epic. New Japan career was a little, you know, epic. 
You know, his indie work was great. WWE career was decent at times. I think right near the end, right near you know the end of his WWE career was pretty decent with with the Miz feud, and then he became all environmental champion, the hemp belt, and everything with Rowan. And then pretty much said bye bye, so long, farewell to WWE. Went to AEW, had pretty damn good matches with with um with uh with Ocean Spray. He had a great match with Kenny. That time limit draw match that it was was fucking epic. You know the 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 the, the three matches he had with Okada, epic. He's had some a lot of good 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 uh. A good fuse. I think he had one with Moxley, that bloody match that it was. He's fought a lot of guys in New Japan, besides Okada. You know, there's a lot of green matches still left to go for Danielson, but I think it's pretty much. I don't. I don't even think we're gonna get Nigel versus Danielson for the final time. As much as we all want it, Nigel wants it. He says, "I got one more match left in me." But that's up to Danielson now. But now that he's getting neck surgery. I don't even think we're going to see that come to light. So, for all those hardcore, old school Ring of Honor fans that remember that entire feud from back in the day, like 2008, 2009, and I was there for Danielson's final match with Nigel in the Grand Ballroom at, in the, Grand Ballroom at the Manhattan Center. Not the Hammerstein, I'll get up to say this one, when it was less people. But I was there for basically Ring of Honor... I don't, I don't, well, I think the event was called uh, the Final Countdown, and guess they played the Final Countdown, and we he sang it at the beginning of the show, and pretty much after Danielson won and left the company, he was hugging hugging everybody. He hugged me, so I was in the front row. I mean, it was just a great show. All the wrestlers came out to you know thank Brian. Brian cuts an epic fucking promo. He's like, "Thank you, I love Ring of Honor." It would be nice for him to be the Ring of Honor champion one more time in, in, in his current career. Nah, probably never happened with that. Or even be the, even be he was a pure champion at, at a certain point. Never won. I don't think he ever never won a TV title. Never won a tag belts or even the trios titles in Ring of Honor, because they never were around by that time. Well, the TV title uh, came after Brian left, so and the pure title was always there. And Brian was a pretty damn good, not long-reigning pure champion, but still. He had lots of wars. Lots of wars with Nigel. His wars with uh, Morishima. Ugh. I, think he had, I think he had a couple wars with Kenta. I mean, he was a fucking beast in Ring of Honor. The American Dragon. He still is the American Dragon. And we always have to say, Yes! You know, but his career is pretty much winding down. He's in his 40s. He's got two kids now. His neck is shot. And he needs another fucking surgery. I don't know if it's another neck fusion. Or it's just a surgery. But pretty much, I don't think he's going to be wrestling anymore. Even if he had the itch. You know Bree and and, and um his kids. I should I wanted to take off my shoes, but now I hurt him. So I can't do that. Uh, anyway. So, I mean, we have to see what happens with, with that. So, so we're going to hear from Danielson on Collision. Uh, I, like I said, I will do my Collision review later tonight. That's that. All right, let's finish this baby off. Because uh, I was baby, baby off. All right, there we go to that six-man tag team match. Ari Cassidy and FTR take it on Roosh, the Beast, Mortis, and Daddy. Along with the rest of the kingdom, the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, I'm Matt Taven and Michael Canales Bennett at ringside. Pretty, pretty decent match. Uh, in the end, uh, uh, Dax and Roosh knock each other down for a double down. Then the hot tag to Orange Cassidy to pick up the pace. Uh, we get a long, long spinning tornado DDT. Plants the beast Mortis. mortis uh, but Roosh comes in for a drop kick on Dax the Axe Hardwood. And then pretty much all six men are in the ring. And then it finishes off with. With the FTR hitting Roosh, Roosh, with the Shatter Machine in under 17 minutes. Great match. 
3.25 out of 5 stars. And then after the match, we had the acclaimed come out. Max was about, Max Cass was about to do his rap, but his mic didn't work. Uh, EW production, you gotta love it. And they basically go in the ring, start arguing with FTR. And security comes in and to hold them back from FTR on the second and third try. Because, as we all know, security... Now, th this is where there's a lot more security guards. So they, mu they must have found them at the donut shop, something like that. I don't know. So we got that. Uh, there was a thing on... Um, on Collision. Where... Uh, Max Caster, they come, they came out again, and then um, something like that. But we do have uh, a little spoiler for you guys: the Acclaim and the Bucks will face off for the AEW Tag Team Belts on a Dynamite, not at the pay per view. Why I do not know. I think it's like a tease. It's like, oh, we're gonna put it on TV, then we're gonna have a rematch at the pay per view. That makes no sense. But anyway, moving on. We move on. Alright, after that, we're going to look at the patriarchy. Chris Gunn! And Nick fucking Wayne and his hot mom, Nick Wayne's mom, has got it going on. Uh, basically becoming the Creos Tag Team Champions. Well, after uh, Christian did the whole ceremony, the Luchasaurus didn't get shit. Uh, so we get them getting beat up by the House of Black and a returning Buddy Matthews last week on Collision. So then we sit, we have Christian and his little patriarchy. Uh, so Christian makes the announcement that on collision we got the bang bang gang of the ass boys and rock hard Juice Robinson taking on the House of Black for a trios ti trios titles shot at the pay per view all in. And then Christian's like, hmm, there needs to be something else in this match. Maybe they need a father. So Christian says, I'm going to become the special guest referee. Oh, you know what that means. Triple threat. And we all knew that was going to happen at all. And anyway, by the way, how are our mothers doing this evening? Uh, but that's always, I, I have to say about that. Moon on. All right, so I give it a three out of five stars. Then we got a video on Hologram, who's 3-0. He had, a, he had a tag team match with Darby Allen. I say, who did, who did they take on? Um, well, they took on the premier athletes of Tony Nese and Josh the Goods Woods, and obviously they won. But it was nice to see Darby and Hologram kind of team up. But it is what it is. All right, after that, we go to your Tony Khan special of the night. We have Camille with the CBS champion and the New Japan Strong Women's Champion Mercedes Monet, the boss. So, they come out, and Camille has a 2-on-1 handicap match, an under-two-minute suck fest, with two, uh, two, um, sad, you know, two ladies named Clara Carter and Jasmine Howe. Howe. H-A-O. Hey, yo, hey, yo, Howe. Anyway, uh, Camille just beat the fuck out of them. Double dominator, double pin, bing, bang, boom, good night. Match gave two out of five stars. After the match, Mercedes and Camille are in the ring. Mercedes is on the mic, brags about being so being being so great. Uh, she's like, "Well, Britt's not here." He's like, "He's like, well, I guess my match at all in is pretty much done. I don't have to go to Wembley and shit like that." But then, Britt Baker's basically, you know, new boyfriend. Basically, so I think you know Tony Schiavone and her have been fucking for months. And years, that's why... Why do you think... Why do you think Adam Cole went back to Pittsburgh? Besides to see... Be closer to his parents. I think Britt Baker did some cheating. And she cheated on Adam Cole with that... With Tony Baloney. Who's a married man. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of divorce papers being... Well, not so much. There's gonna be divorce papers for Tony Baloney coming in the mail soon. Britt Baker... And uh, Adam Cole gonna break up. I thought they were going to get married and have amazing kids. Baby! But we don't even know right now if, if that even happened. I'm just hypothetically saying possibly Tony Baloney and Britt Baker got it on. 
I mean, I wouldn't blame Tony Maloney. Britt Baker's a nice-looking lady and everything. But sometimes you can't touch the merchandise. But it is what it is. All right, so Tony Baloney gets gets on the mic. He says, hold on, hold on, Mercedes. You know, I just got word from Tony Conman. So he's basically overwritten the Elite's suspension. You know, it wasn't really the Bucks suspension. So it's like, so it's like, Tony Khan has a, has a lifted Brit uh, Baker suspension. So she's back on the roster and she's no longer suspended. And then we see Britt on on the ti- on the Tron, and basically says, "Well, my suspension is is over, and at all in, I'm gonna beat you up, Mercedes. I'm gonna take your title, and I'm gonna and um, I'm still gonna be Britt Baker, D M D, baby. Should be a good match. I think Mercedes is gonna retain. I don't even know who's gonna beat her at this point. I think it's gonna be Camille." Turning on her later on. I think Camille will be the new TBS champion. And maybe the new the new uh, New Japan Strong Women's Champion as well. You know. But. But really after she after Mercedes loses those belts. What do you do with her? I mean. I, what I would do. I would book her and Soraya at night. Right then and there. Have, start that feud from 2016. The Revenge of Soraya tour. Uh, feud. So Soraya can get her, can get her measure of revenge after after uh, Merce- after Sasha Banks basically ended her career for a little while, for like basically a few years, like seven years, seven eight years. I would start booking that feud right now, but I'm not the booker. I'm just a 47 year old schmuck from from Brooklyn. But it is what it is. But I got ideas, goddammit! Means Tony Khan and Hunter, HBK. Even you, Mr. Tanahashi son. I work in Japan. I will work in Japan. You know? Just just get get me get me there. Get me there. Just give me a lifetime lifetime membership to Applebee's or TGA Fridays, and I'm there. You just have to worry about the Asian chicks. You know, I have to, I have to watch where I go, you know, because those Asian chicks, you know, they're just get take one look at you and like, oh, I want to suck your dick a long time. I'm like, shit. Let's go back to the hotel. And then that's it. I <laughs> that's it. I, I, I'm set for life. I'll live in Japan for a while. So I don't, until I don't feel like living in Japan anymore. I'll come back to the U.S. Maybe I'll live in Puerto Rico. I don't know. But anyway. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so we get that. All right, then we get another. So I gave that whole thing 2.25 uh, 2. out of 5 stars. Then we get a video on Brian Danson and Swerve and All In for the AEW World title. Then we have Claudio Castagnoli, Swiss Jet. Uh, winning a triple threat match on Collision last week. And now he has a face to face. He has a match with Oh Kada for the Continental Breakfast Championship, which will probably be at All In. But we're gonna have a face to face this Wednesday night on the program. Hmm. That match I am actually actually looking forward to. I'm interested. That's what we said. Oh, we got that. All right, so we got that on Wednesday. Then we go to your main event. I think this is, is this the main event. Yes. Yes! So we got Brian Danielson and Jeff Jarrett. Anything goes, no time limit match. Ricky Steamboat on commentary. This was barbaric. Uh, Jarrett jumps Danielson from, you know, during his entrance. Guitar shot to the back. Beating the living shit out of uh, Danielson. Then they go to the crowd. They go to the concourse. Jarrett suplexes Danielson through a trash can. Ow! And then Danielson comes back, suplexes him on the same trash can. Ow. And then, uh, go to break, come back. Jarrett uses a chair to basically beat, uh, wreck Danielson's knee. Uh, Jarrett gets sent outside. Danielson did that stupid suicide dive of his. No wonder he's getting neck surgery again. Well, we got that. Um, 
And then Danzig gets in a chair shot of his own. Then a spider suplex, superplex, I should say. He sets up the missile drop kick. And then, uh, for some reason, Danzig starts firing off the just kicks. And then Jarrett pulls him into a figure four leg block. Woo! Nick Shabba, Eric Flair style. Then some chairs to the knee by Danzig break that up. So then Jarrett thinks he's Bret Hart. Searches to the sharpshooter. And then Danielson reverses that into the bell lock. That gets broken up. Then they beat the crap out of each other. Danielson grabs the chair again. Hits the running Muzaiko, Muzaiko knee strike. In the Jarrett's head with the chair. That was crazy. One, two, three. Brian Danielson gets the win in 15 and a half minutes. Match was good. 3.25 out of 5 stars. And then after that. Uh, to end the sh to end the night, uh, Ricky Steamboat goes to the ring along with Karen Jarrett, the original player from the Himalaya, Mr. Uh, Sanjay Dutt, and Black Machismo. Oh yeah, Jay Lethal. They all go down to the ring. Uh, Danson helps Jarrett up. We get a code of honor. You'd love to see that. And then Swerve comes out with my good buddy Prince Nana. By the way, buy his coffee, please. Just, just. Just uh, look up uh, Prince Nana Coffee on Google and go to his website. Buy the coffee. Tastes good. Rosa loves it. She probably had a, probably had a, she had a cup this morning. So Prince Nana, she is drinking your coffee, by the way. Because she loves you. Uh, not like that. Not like that. We, we know we have an agreement. But anyway. Uh, so Swerve comes out and says, We just saw three leggings of TBS programming. Jeff Jarrett, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and me, Swerve. <laughs> Fuck you, Danielson. Uh, so he says, we've all been world champions, unlike you, Brian Danielson. So everybody clears out of the ring. He goes, we're going to do some talking now. A little less talk and a lot more action. But this time, a lot more talk and a little less action. So everybody clears out of the ring. Swerve gets in the ring after that. And he says, I won't hesitate to hit the kill shot on Danielson. Basically, end your career. And put you out the pasture. And then it's like, it's like, well, since you had a warm-up match with Jarrett, I should have a, my, uh, uh, my own type of match next week. Like a pick-your-poison match, basically. So Sora's like, well, since you had a match, I'm going to have a match this next week on Dynamite. And it's going to be against... You, Wheeler Yuta, who is in the ring with Danielson. So, William Yuta versus Swerve this Wednesday night. And Dan and, and Swerve's like, hey, Brian, you can sit at ringside to witness the murder. So I'm like, why not? So we have a big stare down to end the show. And that's pretty much it. So... That was great. So, Dynamite was pretty good. 7.25 out of 10 stars. And that's it. Alright. Really quickly, we gotta go to Rampage. And then I'm gonna be out of here. I know I'm late to, to get out of here. But, I go on tangents. But it is what it is now. You know. I gotta go. Rose is in the bathroom. She's about to get out soon, so... I gotta wring my neck. But well, we got that. Um, and um, that's it. All right. Um, okay, we're gonna get the rampage right now. As long as as soon as my uh my notes load, and hopefully I don't have to get up very quickly and get the get the rampage results on my other phone with my notes. But we'll see what happens with with that. All right. Here we go. Alright, so... I'm just... Uh, get my notes all set up. Here we go. Alright, we're... Here we go. Alright, so we start off Rampage with an in memory of Kevin Sullivan. That was very nice. This did the same thing on SmackDown. Very good. And they did it for Collision as well. So that was very nice. That AEW and WWE did that. TNA... Oh, T it was after TNA Ring of Honor. So because it happened Friday night. So... so you know, condolences go out to Kevin Sullivan's family once again. Watch the video on my Metal God channel, my tribute to Kevin Sullivan. Watch that. All right, after that, 
we begin the show with, once again, Hi guys, I'm back for the second time this week, and I'm on Collision tomorrow, on the next night too, so you see me three times a week, guys, because I'm Darby Allen and I come from Seattle. Hi <laughs> guys. Anyway, so Darby Allen, so Darby faces the Butcher. Oof. Butcher beat the fuck out of him. Darby ble was bleeding from the nose in this match, but somehow, someway, Darby beats the Butcher. After a super cold red from the top rope, then the coffin drop, one, two, three, and just under ten and a half minutes, Darby gets the win, matching a 3.25 out of 5 stars, and that's it. Alright, then we see uh, an after segment from Dynamite, Don Cow is yelling at Roosh over his loss. Uh, Roosh says, I was will, you know, Roosh says, I was willing to do everything to become the best. Well, that obviously did not work. Um, so then Don Cow says, well, on Collision, you're facing your, your former friend and teammate, Preston Vance. Remember him? Mr. Ten of the Dark Order? So, that match happened. Um, I think Roosh won that match, obviously. Uh, we get that. Moving on. Alright, then we're gonna look at the brawls between Jar Jared, Jay Lethal, and Hangman Adam Page. After Dynamite last uh, last week, so I think we got Jay Lethal and Hangman Adam Page on on Dynamite this uh, Wednesday night. So we got that, and um, Lethal does a promo for that afterwards. So there you go. Moving on. All right, there we go to our next match: William Utah taking on Rocky Romero. They say, Mister Rapongi Vice himself. Eleven minute match exactly. Brian Danielson at ringside. Uh, excuse me, on commentary, you should say. With Matt Maynard and uh, Excalibur and Tony Baloney. Uh, uh, William Yuta thinks he does his best Brian Danielson impression. Um, after Rocky Romero hits sliced bread number two, taking, up, taking William Yuta down, but then uh, Rocky tries a, the top rope version of, the sli of sliced bread number two, but William Yuta countered it. And then locks in cattle mutilation. Mmm, Brian Danielson move. Uh, and Rock Romero taps out. Decent match. Three out of five stars. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so a little warm-up for William Udall before his murder on Wednesday night uh, as he takes on Swerve. And that's it. Alright, then we go to Willow Nightingale, the resident fun girl. The CMLL Women's Champion. She's frustrated with what, with what the resident pimp, Stokely Hathaway, has done to Chris Statlander. And that, their feud has been going on. And then Tomohiro Ishii comes in for a chat. He's like, I have an idea. Oh, and then we find out that at the on the pre-show at Zero Hour for All In, we got a mixed tag team match with Stokely Hathaway and Statlander taking on Ishii and Will Nightingale. Nightingale. Guess who wins that one? You, if you say... Uh, Stokely Hathaway and Statlander, I might have to slap you. But then again, anything can happen. But listen. Alright, so we got that. So 2.25 out of 5 stars for that. Then we go to Private Party, Isaiah Cassidy and and Mark Quinn. Can I get a... Oh, yeah! They take on the Dawson Twins, Zane and Dave. I know you guys. Hi, guys. How you guys doing? I remember you guys. Anyway. So it starts with Brother Zay and Dave Dawson fist bumping. Fist pumping, no. Oh yeah, Jersey Shore! No, all we needed was the music. We didn't get any of that. So it was a four minute exactly match. Uh, Private Party hits silly string for an earphone on Dave Dawson. Then a stunner, by God, a stunner, into an assisted sliced bread. Uh, puts Dave down again. Then, Private Party finishes them off with gin and juice. Rolling down the street, sipping endo, sipping on gin and juice. Private Party gets the win. They pay homage to the great Snoop Diggity Dog. Or, as a former, former person I used to know, used to say, Snoopy Dog Dog. <laughs> Don't ask. That's all. That's it. Alright, so uh, two and a half out of five stars for that. Then we get a promo for from uh, the virtuoso Diana Perrazzo. Uh, promising to summon a symphony of violence mm, on Thunder Rosa in that uh, Texas bull rope match on Collision, and it was bloody as fuck. 
Good match. Not as great as any Dunder Rosa parkour match you've seen before, especially with the one with Britt back in the day. That was crazy. I think she had two of them. One, I think both against Britt Baker. One was in a cage. One was on Dynamite during the pandemic era. That was crazy. But we we get that. So so watch Collision because that match is freaking insane. Speaking of insane, we got Dustin Rose, a natural, wants to fight the Kingdom and win the Ring of Honor tag team belts. He's ready the one third of the trios champions with uh with Marsha and Ross, the Von Eriks. But now he wants to go after the tag team belts. Well, he has a guy to team up with. That's Sammy Guevara, was a Spanish god. So he wants to go after the title, after the Ring of Honor tag team titles, and then the Kingdom come in. And basically kick Dustin right in the balls. So you know what that means. Ring of Honor tag team titles on the line. Probably at zero, on Zero Hour or maybe on the main show. And I think Dustin and Sammy Guerrero will become the new champions. And Dustin become a double champion. Sammy will be a tag team champion. So he's pretty much ha like not even halfway. He's halfway there to the Triple Crown. Because he's won the TNT title. He's a Now he's probably going to be a Ring of Honor tag team champion. And all he has to do is win... The world title and maybe the inter the international title to be a Grand Slam champion, but who knows if that is going to happen? All right, so I get that two point two five out of five stars. Then we go to your main event of Rampage, and uh, pretty decent match with we had Soraya Knight, we had Paige with the lovely Harley Cameron at ringside, mm. and she takes on the Native Beast. Nyla Rose, first time ever. Uh, Paige is the Paige Turner during the match for near fall. Whoops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Stop. Stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you work with me? Very good. Sorry about that. My notes uh, just went out of control. All right. So, so Paige is the Paige Turner for near fall. Now he comes right back with a basement drop, uh, basement super kick for a near fall. Then he starts trading forearms in the middle of that ring. Knock each other down. They get back up. Nyla drops, drops Paige with a clothesline. And then Harley Cameron offers a distraction. No, she did not show her, bo her hot boobies. I wish she did to me. But that's another story for another time. Uh, so, she, so Harley offers a distraction. Not that it really did anything. Um, but Nyla tra tries to suplex Harley in. But, but Harley plays Bobby Heenan and, uh, with the trip. And Soraya just lands on her like at SummerSlam 90-something. Remember when Rick, Rick, when Rick Rude won the Intercontinental title from, from the Warrior before WrestleMania 6? No, nah, it was like... I think it was before WrestleMania 6. Because Warrior had the belt. Then he beat Rick Rude to get it back. Then the feud with uh, Hogan started, I believe, to, up to WrestleMania 6, where... Where we all know what happened. Warrior beat Hogan. Become double champion. And then pretty much the Intercontinental title went to a freaking tournament. Stupid. Not just not like the days. Not like today. Where you can you can become a double or triple champion. And you don't even have to give up the belt. You have to defend all three belts basically. Like Jay Lethal did back in Ring of Honor. Circa 2015. He had two matches on the same night. Defending the TV title. And defending the world title at the main event. That was crazy for him. But he did it. For a very long time. 400, I think it was 422 days as the world champion. I don't, I think he had, and he held the, the TV title for over a year. But he was a very good champ. Very good champ. I think he lost the TV title to Roddy. And then he lost the, the world title to guess who? Adam Cole, baby. When Adam Cole, Adam Cole turned on everybody. He joined it with the box to form the... Bucks, baby, well, the elite, baby, and then the whole thing with Kenny goes to Japan with the title and held the belt until uh, Kyle O'Reilly took it from him at, I think, uh, Final Battle 2017, I believe. I was there for that, too, and I did not like it. I was mad. I was mad, and then I was there when Kenny kicked, kicked, uh, kicked Adam Cole, Kenny the Bucks kicked Adam Cole out. Kenny wasn't there, obviously, he was on the Tron. And I was sitting in the, in the first balcony. The lights go out. I see freaking, uh, uh, you know, the villain Morty Skull come out. And then 
he basically took uh, Adam Cole's place. And okay, he's like, he's like every hero has a villain, and then the lights come on, and freaking Marty Skull's there, opens his opens his uh, you know, you know, he's there, he's there with the box, and then Marty Skull hits Adam Cole right in the face with the fucking the fucking umbrella, knocking him the fuck out, box freaking annihilating him with super kicks. And then pretty much after that, Adam Cole had his final match the night after in Philly. And then after that, he made his triumphant return. He made his uh, NXT debut like a couple months later at NXT Brooklyn. But he beat the fuck out of Drew McIntyre. I thought they were going to have a match, but then Drew McIntyre got pretty much gone. I think he got fired. He got released. And then somehow he's back. Now look at him now. Drew McIntyre is a fucking savage beast right now. Making fun of, I mean, making fun of CM Puke, you know, Punky Brewster now we call him. We don't call him CM Puke, we call him Punky Brewster now. And now, he's having the time of his life. Beat Punk clean, mind you. You know, you know, people saying, oh, it wasn't clean because, you know, the, you know Seth Rollins got knocked down. He still beat him. And he probably will beat him again at bed blood inside Hell in a Cell. I mean, we'll have to see what happens with that. But anyway, uh, yeah, so we got a, like, SummerSlam 92, I think it was 92, 94, I forgot what year. But we get one of those type of things. To, so, uh, Soraya gets the win over Nyla Rose. And the match is alright, two and a half out of five stars, and that's pretty much it. So, that is it for Rampage, and I gave Rampage seven out of ten stars. Solid seven, and that's it. So, thanks for watching. Leave me your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments section. What do you guys thought of Dynamite and Rampage? And, um, that's it. And, um, I am out of here, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll be back later tonight on my Kill with Demons channel with your Collision Review and TNA and Ring of Honor. Hopefully by the end of the night. If not, probably be, probably, uh, sometime Monday evening before Raw goes on the air. But, maybe I'll scrap it. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. But that is it. I gotta really go, guys. Thanks for watching. And until next time, you're not down with that, Will. Fuck you, man. That's it. I'm out of here. 